what he wants out of me. Anything. Anything at all. God will take me through anything in order to get what he wants out of me. He took the Israelites through the wilderness just to get what he wanted out of them for 40 years. He took Jesus to the cross to get what he wants out of him. God will take me through anything in life in order to get what he wants out of me. That's why the Bible says something in James and that's why I end today. James chapter 1 verse 2. James chapter 1 verse 2 and I end there. Because when God begins to take me through these trials, when he begins to take me through these tribulations, what is he trying to teach me? What is God really trying to say? Now look at chapter 1 verse 2. My brethren, <coughs> count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. What did the Bible say to do? Count it all what? Joy. I can't hear you. Joy. I can't hear you. Joy. Count it all. Joy. Lord, I just lost all my money. Count it all. Joy. Lord, the thieves just stole my Apple laptop and everything I have. Count it all. Joy. Okay. <laughs> I was just that night with a terminal disease. Count it all. Joy. <laughs> now I'm getting there. I can see the voice is beginning to decrease. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. It says, count it all joy. All joy. But Lord, I don't understand. I thought I read for the exam, but I still failed it. Count it all joy. I thought you told me to go into this business. I went into it. I was so sure. Count it all joy. We're not talking again. Our voice going low. Lord, I loved him. He loved me. And I asked you about it. You said, go ahead. But now the relationship is going in a way I don't understand. But God says, count it all. Joy. <laughs> but Lord, I just got pregnant. And I think I have to take that baby out. Mm. And God is still saying, count it all. Joy. How do I count that a joy? I was talking to a young lady in Keep a few weeks ago. And she told me, she said, Pastor, you're talking about counting it all joy. Let me tell you a brief history of my life. That's what she said. So she sat me down. Okay, I knew I was in for it. <laughs> and she told me, when I was eight years old, I was molested by my uncle. My parents would go out, just me and him. And every day he would molest me. Every day. She said, that uncle moved out of the house miraculously. She said, I thought that was it. I thought I had been safe. I was still trying to get over it. At the age of 13, Angobas came to her house and they raped me again. And you still want me to count it all joy. And you still want me to count it all joy. I got into the university and fell into the hands of a cultist. Two cultists were trying to get a hold of one lady. And you still tell me to count it all joy. How am I going to count that all joy? How am I going to explain the fact that I lost all that I had even before I knew the value of what I had? What, what account am I going to write that one in now? Which account can handle that one? As I'm talking, just scan through your life. You know those things. Those things that appear to face you every now and then. And you're like, God, how do I count this joy? How do I see the beauty in this my ashes? Because I don't even understand what I'm going through. And God, you say, count it all joy. <coughs> my dad said he'll be there for me. He'll send me one any time I need him. But all of a sudden, he has just decided to, you know, abscond. I call his number, I see it, and then he puts me on busy. <laughs> and God, he said, count it all joy. I'm facing expulsion in the next two weeks. Count it all joy. <coughs> now look at this. He says, count it all joy. Let me read from the Amplified. 
He says, my brethren, consider it joyful whenever you are enveloped or encounter trials of any sort or fall into various temptations. Be assured and understand that the trial and proving of your faith, remember I'm still on the breaking process, that God will have to break you to anything until he gets what he wants out of you. He will have to take you through anything. The way you put a tea bag in hot water because you want to get the flavor out, is the same thing. God will put you in hard positions just to get what he wants out of you. Because yes, faith grows. But faith grows on cloudy days. Mm. Hallelujah. The level of your faith did not grow when everything was rosy. No. Mm -hmm. It grew when you had no one else to turn to. The reason I can believe God for some things in my life right now is because I've been in a place where I had no one else to turn to except God. And until God brings you to that place, He cannot give you out and use you as a minister of the gospel. So he says, but be assured and understand that the trial of your faith will bring out endurance and steadiness and patience. But let endurance and steadiness and patience have to play and do a thorough work so that you may be a people perfectly developed with no defects, lacking in nothing. Perfectly developed with no defects, lacking in nothing. Stay in the oven until you get cooked. Mm -hmm. Don't come out as premature. No. Stay in the womb till you are ready to be burnt. I was telling them in church a few weeks ago that the difference between an elephant and a rat is that an elephant takes about four years to get pregnant and give birth to the baby. From conception to pregnancy, four years. Uh -huh. But you know how long it takes a rat? Do you know? Four days. Four days. So you want it fast, right? You want the anointing fast, right? You want God to use you fast, right? I pray that you will not give birth to rats. I mean, four days. Get pregnant today. Carries the pregnancy the second day. Third day is in labor. Fourth day the baby is out. Sure. <laughs> No hassles. But for four years, an elephant is still there, incubating the thing. People might not see it yet, but it's incubating the thing. See, there's something on your inside. Even though people don't see it yet, it is being incubated. Mm -hmm. Just tell them, wait for me. I am coming. Mm -hmm. You don't have to see it yet, but I see it on my inside. I see it on my inside. In fact, I tell people, the way, the way God is taking me to, I have seen it, I have seen the future, and I have decided to stay there. No turning back. No turning back. So are you giving birth to a rat, or you want to give birth to an elephant? Stay in the oven. Let God cook you. He says so that you do not come out with defects. Have you seen premature babies before how they look? I'm sure you don't want your destiny to look like that. So, many are called, but few are chosen. So in the process of being called to being chosen, there is a wilderness test you will have to pass through. But the blessing that God blesses you in the second stage is what prepares you for the breaking in the third stage. Because without the blessing, you cannot withstand the breaking process. You will die in the wilderness. You will die in the wilderness. I pray that none of us will die in that wilderness. Amen. You know, for 40 years, the Israelites, I'm not talking now with this. For 40 years, the Israelites were in the wilderness. For 40 years. But notice what God said about them. Let's go back to that place as I round up. Notice what God said about them. This one of It is, and you shall endlessly remember all the way which the Lord your God led you these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you, to prove you, number two, to know what was in your mind and heart, whether you will keep his commandments or not. 
The Bible says something again in verse 3. It says, And he humbled thee, he suffered thee to hunger, he caused you to be hungry. He caused you to have no money. He put you in that situation himself. He set you up. And then he fed you. After he has set you up, he fed you again. He made you hungry, then he fed you. Imagine, he made you hungry, then he fed you. I've been watching how an eagle trains the baby. You know what they do? How an eagle trains an eaglet. Takes the eaglet to the highest. Then all of a sudden, throws the eaglet down. And you'll be like, hey, this eagle is wicked. Oh well, no, it's the training process. So when the eagle comes out, it does not act like a dove outside. No, it does not. Because he has been cooked. So let me just round up with this now. He says, and he humbled thee, suffered thee to hunger, fed thee with manna which you know not, neither did your fathers know, that he might make thee know that man does not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord. So you mean all God is trying to do throughout my years in the wilderness is to just to teach me one thing. Can you still trust me? Can you still trust me when the bills are due and there's no money to pay? Can you still trust me when you don't have anyone to run to to help? Can you still trust me when you don't even understand God? Listen, if you don't understand God, just do what? Trust Him. If you don't understand God, just trust Him. I'm going to stand up this morning. I put your right hands on your chest. I don't want to pray with your destiny. Mm. I felt God wanted me to talk about how you could move from being called to being chosen. The process of moving from being a called vessel to being a chosen vessel is in knowing that I will have to pass through those wilderness before I could get to my promised land. No wilderness, no promised land. Did you hear that? No wilderness, no promised land. Because God cannot mismanage your life. If He takes you from Egypt to the promised land, it is God's mismanagement. Mismanagement at its height, because you will mess up. It's a wilderness that equips you for the, for the promised land. No wilderness, no Egypt. Just begin to talk to God. Ask God, Lord, I don't understand, but I trust you. I don't understand, but I trust you. I don't understand, but I trust you. I trust that you are taking me through this wilderness for a purpose. I trust that you are taking me through this desert for a purpose. And I ask that all that you have asked to fulfill in my life.
right. You will take them to the promised land. Amen. I pray that they will not die in the wilderness. Amen. They will not die in the wilderness. Amen. But they will get there, Lord. Amen. And Lord, even those times when they couldn't understand you, Lord, I ask that, Lord, you just help them to count it all joy. You just help them to trust you. When they can't find you in their situations, all they will do is to trust you. Lord, as a church, we decide to trust you. We trust you with our life. We trust you with everything. And Lord, I prophesy unto this church the blessing of the Lord. I ask that you bless this house financially. I ask that you bless this house spiritually. I ask that you bless this house with every good and perfect gift. In the name of Jesus. And the will that is experienced, I declare that Lord, it is over in this house. We are taking this house to a new level. I prophesy that this church is moving to the next level. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we give you praise. Thank you, Lord. For in Jesus' name we pray. Come on, give Jesus a big one. Yes, I will trust in him. Yes, I will trust in him. I can you hope in a man that will that can do that will destroy him. Jesus said, My father, my father. Forgive them. But my spirit. He my father, my father, why are we forsaken? Why are we forsaken? No my But my spirit. is given into your hands. given into your hands. Someone that has left you alone, you still try and trust your spirit to his hands. Probably such a pastor will have left the church for a long time ago. The poor pastor left you. And your spirit is still with the pastor. Only Jesus could do that. Friends, the wilderness is a blessed place. It's a place of formation. It's a place of training. It's a place of character. Tomorrow, everybody wants a pastor to pray for you. I want the kind of anointing you have. Let's go through the wilderness and went through the universe. Go through the wilderness and went through the Dr. Benson and also told us. Somebody said, I want the kind of anointing you have. I said, put on your knees, please. Let's pray for you. That you go through the way that you That they send you out of the apartment that you couldn't pay for. That you are free. That you are free. not ready for it. You can't influence if you don't have the, the world that is the theme of our, our camp meeting. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's the promise already, alright? Mm-hmm. 
Amen. 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 Amen.